Uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time. Her name was Wendy Williams. And uh, she was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such. And now it's all come full circle. There were many situations, none of which to talk about, but there were many situations um, back in the day in, in my career. And um, it's all coming. I got one of the hottest DJs off of Hot 97 because she wanted to put up a picture of him getting his pants pulled down. But the the difficulty is getting people to believe something that they don't want to believe. And in each of these cases, this is where the money is. And she uh, allegedly has been avoiding Puffy. You know, my thing about when you date a mogul, like he can hire a plane right now, land on the roof of the hotel where she's staying, pay people off the front desk. I'm already paranoid. But y'all have bad for a while. Real bad. Real bad. The worst. The worst. We snagged one of Hot 97's sizzling DJs in the midst of a scandalous storm. So, picture this, the fiery Wendy Williams, once a radio royalty, dared to stir the pot, but the backlash was scorching. Rumor has it she's been dodging the notorious Puffy, and who can blame her? Dating a mogul like him is like dancing with the devil. He could swoop in, make a grand entrance, and hush it all up with a flick of his wrist. Paranoia levels through the roof, folks. And here's the kicker, the truth's a tough pill to swallow, especially when it's juicier than a ripe watermelon. Enter Cat Williams, stirring the gossip pot once more, unveiling the dark secrets of Wendy's downfall. From the heights of talk show fame to scraping the bottom with empty pockets. The culprit? None other than Diddy, pulling the strings from behind his empire's curtain. Diddy and Wendy? Oh, they've got history, and it's as bitter as a lemon soaked in vinegar. Wendy once blew the whistle on Diddy's shady dealings, whispering about closet skeletons and Hollywood hush-hush. It got so heated that Diddy went full throttle, slamming the brakes on Wendy's career faster than you can say radio waves. He waved his mighty scepter, decreeing a radio blackout across the Big Apple, ensuring Wendy was banished from the airwaves. When she put out those pictures of the dude pulling his pants down, and it looked like some gay act that was going on, he got on the phone. He said, let me tell you this. When I get back to New York City, if she's on a radio station, he's talking to a radio executive. He said the same thing to she. He said, nobody that I deal with, nobody that I know is going to do anything with y'all. No business at all. It ain't going to be no artists, no nothing. Gonna come. He's telling people that at a radio station. When we got back to New York City, Wendy Williams was in Philly <laughs> at a new station. Picture this, Wendy, armed with scandalous snapshots, ready to set the airwaves ablaze with gossip hotter than a summer sun. But before she could spill the tea, Diddy swooped in like a vengeful eagle, grounding her before she could take flight. The result? Wendy, ousted from her throne at Hot 97, her voice silenced by the almighty Diddy, leaving a trail of whispers in her wake. Picture this, a sunny day in Cancun, where the air is thick with mischief and the heat is on. Puffy, the man of the hour, soaking up the sun, when suddenly, a playful prank turns into a scandalous snapshot. One minute, he's lounging by the pool, the next, his trunks are down for the world to see. Click. A group of girls caught the moment, sending shockwaves straight to Wendy Williams' inbox. Wendy, always hungry for a scoop, saw gold in that photo, a bombshell waiting to explode. She flashed it around, teasing the scandalous shot to anyone who'd listen. But Puffy wasn't having it. He made it crystal clear to Hot 97, if Wendy wasn't out on her ear before he hit NYC, they could kiss their music connections goodbye. No tunes, no deals, just radio silence about Wendy Williams. She got fired from Hot 97 because she had a picture of Puffy. So if you don't mind, give me the story from your point of view and what was in the picture. We were in Cancun. For whatever reason, dude was playing with Puff. He went behind him and grabbed his trunks and pulled them down. Some girls that was taking pictures. They took the, that picture and emailed it back to Wendy Williams. <laughs> Wendy Williams said she had him in a compromising position and like it was it, something like that. She was gonna put it out. Wendy had shown people that email. Puff told Hot 97, if they didn't get rid of her, 
before he got back in New York that they was not gonna get any music from any of his friends, any of the record labels executives that was cool with him. Everybody was gonna boycott, boycott their station. We was out in LA for about three days before we landed back in New York when New Williams was in the radio station in Philly. He was fired. Fast forward to the City of Angels, where gossip flies faster than a Hollywood rumor. Wendy's in Philly, but her career's on the line, tangled in a web of whispers and threats. And who's pulling the strings? None other than Diddy himself, orchestrating her downfall with a sinister smile. A very homosexual era of hip hop as well. Uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time, her name was Wendy Williams, and uh, she was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such. And now it's all come full circle. There were many situations, none of which to talk about, but there were many situations um, back in the day in, in my career, and um, it's all coming full circle now, so. But Wendy's no damsel in distress. When Diddy's cronies came knocking, she stood her ground, with her knight in shining armor swooping in just in time to save the day. Total, Diddy's girl group, itching for a fight, but Wendy's bow played hero, stopping the showdown before it began. The tension hung thick in the air, with Wendy and her crew peeking from the windows, ready for anything. As the clock struck, signaling the end of the day, Wendy stepped out into the chaos, unaware of the storm brewing outside. Total, lurking like shadows, ready to pounce, but Wendy's not one to back down. With her trusty sidekicks by her side, she faced the music, ready to take on whatever drama the day brought her way. Here one day and them, <laughs> them total were downstairs waiting and everybody upstairs at the radio station was looking down, egging it on, waiting for something to go down. I wasn't yet married. My knight in shining armor screeched up in his car just out of nowhere. Didn't even know. I didn't even know what was about to happen. I'm standing in the door like what? And I'm literally about to go through now. I'm not like what, like what, let's fight because I'm not one of those type of broads. And plus there was three of them. The little Chinese man that drove the van that they were coming. There was no security or anything. It was just them three fighting broads. And me. And my co-workers at shot standing upstairs trying to look down to see it all jump off. They all knew. When I said goodnight to everybody, everybody's pressed up against the window. I didn't even walk or bother asking, what are you all looking for? Because you know when the clock strikes, it's time to go. It is time to go. I, I didn't get a chance to hit the sidewalk before I knew it out of nowhere. And uh, there's a whole bunch of rah-rah going on outside and I'm still trying to figure out what that was going on. And I send Cower and Skell out on the sidewalk and he comes back in and says, it's total outside. And they were, they were about to set it on you. Y'all, buckle up cause Wendy's dishing out the hot gossip and it's spicier than a jalapeno on fire. Cassie, caught in the whirlwind of Diddy drama with Wendy dropping hints like breadcrumbs, but who's paying attention? The tea's brewing and it's about to boil over. South Africa filming Honey 3. And she uh, allegedly has been avoiding Puffy and, um, you know, my thing about when you date a mogul is that it's really difficult to avoid them because if you use your head, you never know when they're going to pop up on the scene. Like he's mogul, like he can hire a plane right now, zoom into South Africa, land on the, on the roof of the hotel where she's staying, okay, pay people off at the front desk, Give me the key and let me up in her room. Like, I'd be, I'm already paranoid. Posted a picture of Michael Jackson's song, Lady in My Life, and wrote, if anyone sees Cassie this weekend, please tell her to listen to this song 100 times. I suggest don't use social media, though, to reach out. I think this is a grand overture from Puffy. I don't believe he really wants her, wants her back. I believe he probably treated her at some particular point like a possession, like a, like a possession, and if you really care, then you'd reach out privately, not publicly. So, picture this, South Africa, the land of lions and legends, where Cassie's filming Honey 3, but there's trouble in paradise. Rumor has it she's dodging Diddy like a game of hide-and-seek, but when you're dating a mogul, there's no escape. He's got tricks up his sleeve, ready to swoop in at a moment's notice, with private jets and hotel keys in hand. Paranoia's the name of the game, folks. And then there's Puffy, playing the grand gesture card, posting cryptic messages like a modern-day Sereno de Bergerac. A Michael Jackson song here, a plea for Cassie's attention there, but Wendy sees right through it. It's all smoke and mirrors, a facade of affection hiding something darker beneath the surface. 
If he really cared, he'd reach out in private, not put on a public spectacle. But Wendy's no fool. She reads between the lines, exposing Diddy's game for what it is, manipulation wrapped in a flashy package. She's got him pegged, like a pro, seeing through his charades with a keen eye and a sharp tongue. Fast forward to 2017, and it's like deja vu all over again. Diddy struts onto the Wendy Williams show, and suddenly, the tension's as thick as molasses. But they play nice, joking and laughing as if their history is nothing but water under the bridge. I, I must say, it's been a long time coming. Yeah. And I want to just tell you how proud I am of you. Because... Because I, I, I don't think you get enough credit for being the first one to really cover our culture. You know, hip-hop culture and, and also hip-hop celebrities shedding light on our culture and our people. And thank you very much. I pissed a lot of people off, including you. Mm -hmm. But this is a full circle moment, yes, everybody. Yes. Get into adult yeah. conversation. Yeah, this yeah. Is full circle. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been a wild ride, folks, but Wendy's not backing down. She's been stirring the pot since day one, shedding light on hip-hop culture and its icons, even if it means ruffling a few feathers along the way. It's a full circle moment, a journey of ups and downs, but Wendy's here to stay, serving up truth with a side of sass. The saga continues, folks, and it's a tale of betrayal and heartache that'll have you on the edge of your seat. Diddy's vendetta against Wendy burns hotter than ever, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. But that's not all, oh no. Wendy's facing a battle of a different kind, one that's as cruel as it is heartbreaking. Picture this, Wendy, once a powerhouse in the media world, now grappling with a diagnosis that threatens to steal her voice forever. Primary progressive aphasia and frontal temporal dementia, a cruel twist of fate that robs her of words and leaves her struggling to navigate the world she once ruled. You know what that is, correct? I know. Okay, you don't know lymphedema? All right, I'll show you. Okay. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. Lymphedema is this. Do you see this right here? Look. Okay. Please. No, look closely. Right. Hold up, please. Look. Hold it up. I can't hold it higher. Do you see? Yeah, it's we can see. Yeah. Okay, do you see this? Yeah. All right, it's up and down. Okay. Okay, that is, I can only feel maybe 5% of my feet. But the plot thickens, my friends. Wendy's trust has been shattered, her world turned upside down by those she thought she could rely on. Exploited and betrayed by the very people appointed to care for her, she's left reeling from the betrayal. Money disappearing into thin air, her once secure future now hanging by a thread. And then there's the documentary, a raw and unfiltered look into Wendy's world, where the truth is laid bare for all to see. She exposes the wolves in sheep's clothing, those who preyed on her vulnerability for their own gain. People around you, stealing money from me, getting money, whatever the case may be, enough. She has people around who are yes people and allowing this to continue. Wells Fargo steps in, freezing her accounts in a desperate bid to stop the bleeding, but the damage is already done. As Wendy fights to reclaim her voice, she's faced with yet another betrayal, this time from the very system meant to protect her. A court-appointed guardian, entrusted with her care, turns out to be just another wolf in the pack, siphoning off what little remains of her fortune. It's a tale of tragedy and triumph, of resilience in the face of adversity. Wendy may be down, but she's far from out, and with the support of her loyal fans, she'll rise from the ashes stronger than ever before. The plot thickens, folks, as the truth behind Wendy's plight comes to light, and it's more twisted than a corkscrew in a hurricane. Sabrina Massey, the puppeteer pulling the strings behind the scenes, her identity unmasked for all to see. And when I began asking questions about my money, suddenly, Lori Schiller has got no response regarding my money. I want my money, this is not fair. And Wells Fargo has no questions and answers with regarding my money. This is this is not fair. And Lori Schiller and Wells Fargo have this guardianship petition about keeping me away from my money. And this guy named Bernie Young, I know for a fact that Bernie Young used my American Express card to hire an attorney to file a petition against me. That was done 
with my American Express card, a former doctor had medical information about me that I never even got. It was sent over to Lori Schiller. I fired the doctor. And again, all I want to know is where is my money? This is not right. But Wendy's not backing down, demanding answers, and her money back with a fiery passion. Lori Schiller and Wells Fargo find themselves in the hot seat, with Wendy pointing fingers and demanding accountability. Where's her money? Who's calling the shots? And why is her life being controlled by strangers with no regard for her well-being? But it's Wendy's family who truly feel the sting of betrayal, watching helplessly as their beloved matriarch slips further into the abyss. Kevin Jr., her son, speaks out, his words a dagger to the heart. Behind the facade of smiles and success lies a woman crying out for help, her family's pleas falling on deaf ears. My mom has done a great job making it seem like everything is okay, always. Wendy, make sure you look here. One, two, yeah. three. But in reality, there's something wrong going on. As her family, we were all sitting on the sidelines watching, and she was crying out for help. Did you drink this whole thing today? Keep it there. Okay. Keep it there. My mom, she always talks about how she wants to work. But I feel as though she's worked enough. She has people around who are yes people and allowing this to continue. Right? This is all too much. Go! Why? I have no idea where we are. This doesn't look like anything familiar. I think she's losing memory. Have you guys noticed that? How dare him? I control me. I weigh 138. Anybody could look at her and tell this is not just alcohol. There's something more going on. And then there's the shocking revelation, Wendy's illness, her mind slipping away like sand through her fingers, fueled by a poison she didn't even realize she was consuming. Alcohol-induced dementia, they call it, a cruel twist of fate orchestrated by those closest to her, manipulating her weakness for their own gain. It's a chilling tale of deceit and desperation, with Wendy caught in the crossfire of greed and betrayal. But she's not alone, and with her family by her side, she'll fight tooth and nail to reclaim her life and her sanity from the clutches of those who seek to destroy her. The echoes of injustice reverberate through the halls of fame, as Wendy's plight draws chilling parallels to the harrowing stories of Britney Spears and Kanye West. Three icons, each ensnared in the tangled web of greed and manipulation, their lives torn apart by those they trusted most. Britney, once the princess of pop, Forced to watch in silence as her family plundered her fortune, her voice silenced by a conservatorship built on lies and deceit. Pumped full of medication she didn't need, her mind and spirit crushed beneath the weight of their control. I would honestly like to sue my family to be totally honest with you. Um, I also would like to be able to short share my story with the world and um, what they did to me instead of it being a hush-hush secret to benefit all of them. I want to be able to be heard on what they did to me by making me keep this in for so long is not good for my heart. I've been so angry and I cry every day. It concerns me. I'm told I'm not allowed to expose the people who did this to me. For my sanity, I need you to the judge to approve me, do, be, do an interview where I can be heard on what they did to me. And actually, I have the right to use my voice and take up for myself. My attorney says I can't, um, it's not good. I can't let the public know anything they did to me. And by not saying anything, is saying it's okay. I, I don't know what I said here. It's not okay. I would much, actually, I don't want to interview. I'd much rather just have an open call to you for the press to hear, which I didn't know today we're doing. I would honestly like to sue my family, she cries, her words a desperate plea for justice. I want to be heard, to share my story with the world, she pleads, her heart heavy with the burden of years of silence. But the shackles of silence bind her, her cries falling on deaf ears as she battles to reclaim her voice. And then there's Kanye, a titan of the music industry, his mind ravaged by a cocktail of medication and misdiagnosis. They tried to medicate me, he declares, his voice tinged with defiance. If I had taken the medication, I would not be here, he asserts, his refusal to bow to their demands a testament to his strength. Look, they tried to medicate me, they, I was exhausted, they wrongly diagnosed me, and they, 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 when I asked them how much lithium did you want to put me on exactly it took them four days to answer because they were embarrassed about the amount right and i refused to take this right you understand that if i had taken the medication i would not be here and it would have been woe is he was deeply troubled we miss him we love his music though well they would have britney spears too 
I mean, look at they were the Michael Jackson or, or worse, yeah. So look, <laughs> at, look at what they did. Look at what they did to Britney when she went in. She was tired. She was exhausted. Yeah. She was in a bad way. But ten years of that medication wrecked her brain. You can see it now. Yeah. You can see there's not much of her left. Their stories, intertwined in a tapestry of tragedy, serve as a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked power and the importance of speaking out against injustice. For Wendy, Brittany, and Kanye, the fight is far from over, but with each voice raised in defiance, they inch closer to reclaiming their freedom and their truth. The plot thickens, folks, as the shadows of conspiracy loom large over Hollywood's elite. Dave Chappelle, the comedic genius, forced into exile by a system hellbent on silencing dissent. I got ahead of schedule and I bounced, he declares, his defiance a beacon of resistance and a sea of manipulation. They were trying to convince me I'm insane, he reveals, his voice tinged with frustration. I refuse to take the medication, he asserts, his refusal to bow to their demands a testament to his strength. But Dave's not alone in his struggle. Cat Williams, the irreverent comedian, speaks out against the industry's insidious tactics, a target of their smear campaigns and threats. Because, because in 30 years I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. So if you and a man was in a corner doing something you wasn't supposed to be doing... You will tell it. No, somebody come to tell me. Okay. I gather that, I value that, I'll pay for that. Come, tell me. I know so many things I shouldn't know and they all know it. I've done nothing but collect information and your secrets, he declares, his words a warning to those who would dare cross him. And then there's Wendy, Brittany, Kanye, and countless others, their voices silenced by a system designed to crush dissent. It's a clear pattern, Kat declares, his eyes flashing with righteous anger. They tried to do the same thing to me, he asserts, his resolve unshakable in the face of their intimidation tactics. But the truth will not be silenced, not as long as there are those willing to speak out against injustice. Wendy, with her sharp wit and unyielding spirit, stands as a testament to the power of truth in the face of adversity. And as the pieces of the puzzle fall into place, it becomes clear that Diddy and his ilk will stop at nothing to maintain their grip on power. But they underestimate one thing, the resilience of those who refuse to be silenced. The speculation swirls like a whirlwind, as whispers of conspiracy cast a shadow over Wendy Williams' plight. Was she intentionally silenced to stifle her outspoken voice? The internet buzzes with theories, each more chilling than the last. It's like they strategically did this to silence her, one commenter muses, their words dripping with suspicion. They're gradually killing Wendy Williams, another laments, their concern palpable through the screen. But amidst the chaos, one question looms large, what role did Diddy play in Wendy's downfall? Cat Williams' explosive claims send shockwaves through the industry, exposing a sinister plot to silence one of its most vocal critics. But is Wendy paying the price for her outspokenness? The debate rages on, with opinions split like a fault line. You've always got to stay on your toes, one viewer warns, their words a cautionary tale in a world where truth is often stranger than fiction. But as the dust settles, one thing remains clear, Wendy's story is far from over, and the truth will eventually come to light. So, dear viewers, what are your thoughts on this unfolding drama? Is Cat Williams the whistleblower we've been waiting for, or is there more to this story than meets the eye? Sound off in the comments below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more updates on this ever-evolving saga.